Define electric potential at a point. Definitions. Got to know the definitions. Potential is also what we use to call volts. Voltage. But now we have a formal definition for it. So you want to think of the work done equals to QV. Remember this old one from AS. Rearrange a little bit. Potential is work done per unit charge to move it around in the electric field now. So we can say that this is the work done. And very importantly, per unit charge. If you want to be more specific, you can say this is a per unit positive test charge. Positive test charge. That's the, that's the best prime definition. Okay, work done to do what? To lift it up, to move it around. You want to talk about moving from infinity, means very far away. From infinity, move it closer to a point. So, per unit positive test charge. Moving the charge from infinity it means very far away to a point. Any points closer. So the marks here, first one, work done per unit charge. Per unit is sometimes very picky. They must see that per unit charge. Moving from infinity to a point. That's the second one. So these two come as M1 and A1 pairs. So if you didn't get the M1, then your A1 also cannot. Okay, so this definition, by the way, is not the same as electric potential energy. If you didn't mention per unit, then it's another, th it's another definition already. For potential, you must say per unit. This is important. Okay, so our setup here is we have two charge spheres, A and B, and you have a point P in between where you're going to be traveling on. So they give us the graph of potential between the two spheres. Okay, so this is a resultant potential graph. This fellow got potential, this fellow also got potential. Add out all the potential, you get this smiley face. Okay. And what do we need to do here? We need to state how the magnitude of electric field at any point may be determined from the graph. This is a what graph again? Potential against distance. So, from a Vx graph, we need to think how electric field relates to potential. Vx graph. Hmm. Electric field, we use the symbol E. And there is one definition you must know. And that is, electric field strength is known as the negative potential gradient by definition. So negative, uh, sometimes we call it dv dx. So if you have a Vx graph, you find the gradient that will give you the potential. So we can say, find gradient, no? find gradient of the tangent. So we can say, find the slope or gradient of tangent to the graph at P. So I'm looking for the idea of slope gradient of tangent or graph or line or curve, whatever that is, uh, looking for the idea. There is one warning though. You need to, oh, by the way, potential gradient is also okay. Can, yeah, that one can. We allow negative dv dx, but you cannot say delta v over delta x. You cannot say v over x. It's not the same. It. This is a rate of change. This one is a average over change. If it's a straight line graph, then we can use this. If it's a straight line graph, we can use this. It's just V of X. So, no, no for these two. Mathematically, not, 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 not correct. Don't, don't, don't use those. Okay, without any calculation, we need to describe the force acting on a positively charged particle 
place at point P for values of X from 0 to 10. Okay, I think I'm hmm, going to look at the graph. So when we look at the force, we need to think of how this force and potential graph relate. This is a V against X. Now, just now we already said that a gradient is electric field strength, right? So it means if I find the gradient, let's say here at this point, hey, look at this, a straight line. That's my electric field. But if I want to find the force, I can, I can find the force. I just take F divided by Q. Because remember, F equals to QE. So E equals to F over Q. So I can use the gradient as a tip to tell me what the force is like. So when they ask me to describe the force, I just need to look at the gradient and talk about how the gradient is changing from 0 to 10. So when they use the word describe, you want to tell the full story. The beginning, the middle, the end, and any any grandmother story you want to tell. Here's a chance to write it all out. So it looks like uh, the first part, we're going to have a maximum force at the tip here. This is a pretty big force here. Maximum force, maximum gradient. Very steep graph. So we talk about that first off. Maximum force at x equals to 0. So maximum force at x equals to 0, which is the surface of A. Then what happens? So you look at the graph over there, right? It's becoming less and less steep. Lesser, 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 lesser. Eventually, at some point down here, it's flat. The, 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 the gradient of the tangent is flat. So there's no more force. So your force is going to be decreasing until F0. Because gradient is 0. So then it starts maximum, then decreases until you reach a point where F force is zero. Force on particle is zero. And where does that occur? Let's just show in the detail. 6 cm. I'm just looking at the gradient only. Huh? Then after that, you see, ui, force is increasing, getting steeper and steeper again. Okay. Then we will say, then it increases after x equals 6. But there's one thing we need to mention. The sign of the gradient though, if you look on the left side, this, this gradient is negative gradient because it's pointing downwards. I draw an arrow. La. Nah, downwards. Downwards, downwards. But here, if you look at the gradient, it's a positive gradient, positive force. So here's a negative force, positive force. That means there is a change in direction of the force. So when we describe it up here, we can say, so the force decreases after 6, but in the opposite direction. So if you want to try and make sense of this, you're like, wow, what is this? Oh my god, what story is this? Imagine uh, sphere A is positive, sphere B is positive. And if you are a positive charged particle moving around, You go too near to first sphere, you experience a force, a very strong resultant force this way. If you go too near to sphere B, you also experience a very strong resultant force the other way. If you are somewhere in between, the net force may be zero because one friend expel, ex, um, repel you from the right, one friend repel you from the left, everybody is repelling you. So you just, this, this is what is happening here. So you have a positive force, negative force, and somewhere in between is zero. So one mark is for maximum force at the surface, that's one. One mark is zero, where is it zero? And one mark, increase in the opposite direction. That is how you can explain the full detail of what's happening with this graph. How is the particle experiencing a force? So now this part, they give us a QM ratio. Because they don't want to give us too many information. So, okay. They give us QM already. 
Initially, the particle is at rest on the surface where x is 0. So it's kind of imagine that you put a particle here on A and it's just chilling there. Very strong repulsion is going to slide to the right. It moves freely. Mark the letter where the charged particle has maximum speed. You can kind of imagine it like a, like a skate, like a slide playground. If you put a marble here, it experiences a force, it will slide down where GPE is converted to kinetic energy. But in this case, instead of GPE, electric potential energy is converted to kinetic energy. And then of course, after that, it will go up, but it will slow down a little bit. So the place where you have the maximum speed is the lowest point. Max Ke. So on our graph, that will be right here, M. You draw M there at the lowest point. That is one mark. Then we need to use the figure to determine the potential difference between the spheres. We are just looking for a difference. Ah. So you need to look at the graph and see. Okay, I'll try to rub off some of this stuff. What is the potential at the surface, which is zero? So you check the graph. Looks like 560. If you can zoom in on the PDF, better. Lah. 560. Ah. Wait, 5, 5. Wow, my, my screen is... I think it's 560 or 570. I can't really tell. Looks like 560 to me. Then you also check at the surface of sphere B. What is the voltage? Looks like it's 200 something. Let me try and see. Uh. I think this is 230 volts. Okay, so you want to find the potential difference? Just take the bigger one minus the smaller one. So we go 560 minus 230. Giving us 330 potential difference. The graph is a bit hard to read, I agree. So the mark scheme thankfully gives a range of values. If you get 330 to 340, it's okay. A little bit different. So now we need to use the answer to calculate the speed of the particle as it reaches the surface of sphere B. So kind of like the child sliding around here, I mean the ball, from a very high position, you want to see it reach surface B. Hmm, what is the change in energy involved? Okay, we got to go here and see. Write down the change in energies. So first, I'm going to state what is the core principle. Core idea here is you have a electric potential energy that is decreasing. Where the energy go? Go to kinetic energy already. So there's a change in kinetic energy and that is an increase in kinetic energy. So time to plug in our values. Now, if you were thinking, Miss EPE, we can use the KQQ over R equals to half MV square. Wait, wait half MV square minus half MU square. Wait, 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 wait. You see the KQQ over R, right? That only has two Q. But you have three charges here. You have sphere A, sphere B, and another charged particle, all positive charge. There's three Qs, you know. QA, QB, and Q. We cannot use the equation when there's more than two charges. So, no. Cannot. That leaves us with only one other method to calculate uh, electric potential energy. And that's a throwback to our AS. Work done equals to Q times V. We'll write that aside. Work done. The charge they are moving around times the change in potential difference when you move the charge around. So we're going to write here Q delta V. That's why they asked us to find delta V up here. So that means if you're going from a high potential up here, this is for example, uh, 560 volts, you roll down and you roll up to 230 volts, there's going to be a decrease in potential. 
the V change uh, right there. Can you see that? You see the change from very high up. You go down. It's like you drop a ball from high up there. You come down. No? So where the energy go? Kinetic energy. So we gotta do some rearranging now. So uh, we release from rest, right? You double check. Did we release it from rest? Ah, yes. The particle is initially at rest. Means the initial speed is zero. So we look at our equation. This uh, half mu square we can throw away already. Bye bye. Okay, let's finish this up. So Q delta V equals to half mv square. And they gave us the QM ratio, right? So Q over m times delta V equals to half V square. We're going to find the V. So we plug in all the things. What's our QM ratio? 4.8 times 10 to the 7 C up there. Okay, so we just write here 4.8 times 10 to the 7. V is the change in potential, 330, equals to half and V square. Okay, so you can rearrange the equation to find what your V is. End of the day, you should get a V which is roughly 1.7799 times 10 to the 5. Or you can round it off to 1.8 times 10 to the 5. And there we have it. The first main important thing is knowing the conservation of energy principles. Work done. So I'm looking, the first mark, for uh, QV equals to half mv square. Okay, one of uh, wait, wait one of these forms for conservation of energy but i also can accept if you write epe equals to ke you can say uh, ep equals to ek acceptable also under the first mark to show that you understand that energy is being converted from one form to the other then if you plug in the correct values 4.8330 okay then this one is for substitution of values and lastly Final answer. Must be at least 2 SF. Okay. So that's how we solve this uh, electric potential question. Especially for charged particles moving around. So be very careful if there's... You've got to see what graph you have. you got to check is, are there 3 charges or are there 2 charges involved. In this case, there's 3. 2 are fixed. The one in the middle is moving around. And gotta know the of course gotta go gotta know the equations for electric fields uh, for this one. Okay, so I think that's all for this question. I'll see you in the next one.